Hi everyone and welcome to our Make a Believer Out of Me show. Uh, my name is Jim Eliason with the uh, with the San, San Diego, Diego Coalition of Reason and my co-host is Sean Taylor. He's with the Secular Humanist Fellowship of San Diego. We're going to do a little uh, something a little different today. We have some uh, non-believers on the show and they're going to talk to us about uh, how they came to their their ideas uh, about religion. So uh, today we have with us the very lovely and talented uh, Desiree, and uh, I'll let Sean start. <laughs> well, Desiree, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, as Jim said, Desiree is a, is a fellow atheist, um, but we would like to get uh, some views as we've done in the past, and we hope to do a lot in the future on this show. Um, get some views from from atheists as well. Obviously, without a belief in God, doesn't say a whole lot about everything else um, uh, that you think and believe, and uh, nor does it say anything as far as why uh, you are without a belief in any God. And so that's something that we're going to explore today. And if you don't mind, Desiree, we would love to just hear about your childhood, how you were raised, religiously speaking. Well, um, majority of my childhood and more, um, well to my early 20s, I was raised as Jehovah's Witness. Um, of course, I wasn't baptized, but um, I participated in the organization. Um, and as far as being a child, growing up in the religion was quite different than, you know, your typical ch child going to school, just with um, our belief system and so forth. What were the biggest differences that you had to deal with as a child of the Jehovah's Witness Temple versus wow. your average? There's plenty. Um, just starting as a kid, going to regular kindergarten from not being able to salute the flag, uh, standing, making sure not to put a hand on my heart, to um, being able to uh, sing the national anthem, uh, Birthdays is quite big as a child, so uh, I I wasn't allowed to celebrate birthdays nor Christmas or any type of holiday for that matter. Were you allowed to go to your uh, friends' birthday parties? Uh, no. Oh, really? It wasn't until my later teens, being that my father he was never a witness, right. so he was more comfortable with my friends at that time. So he was he was able to let me go. But as a younger uh, child, no, I. I only went to parties that were done by the Jehovah's Witnesses with other children. Was that a foreign, I mean, as a child you wouldn't maybe know the difference other than what you might have seen outside, but how did you feel about it? Oh, of course it was foreign. Um, I mean, the other kids used to make fun of me, I remember, uh -huh. because I didn't have a birthday. They used, to, they used to try and feel sorry for me, being that they were like, well, I don't understand, it's your, it's your birthday, you're supposed to have parent presents, and how come you don't get that? Your parents should do that for you. and. I always had to let them know, well, I might not have gotten presents on my birthday, but my father always took care of and made sure that he got me what I wanted. Um, we got to spend one-on-one -on -one time. I remember he would just take me to Toys R Us and he let me pick toys off the shelves, you know. Um, so that was a way to satisfy that. And never throughout my childhood was I withheld from any of the belongings. If anything, I was spoiled still as a child, so it was fun. So it was just the missing of the actual celebration. Right. Um, probably Christmas was more of a major holiday that I didn't, get, I didn't really participate in. But again, that's where my father came in, had a huge voice in that, being that he loved Christmas. But being that he's not a follower of the witnesses, and he loved to gamble and go to Vegas, that's what we did. We went uh. to Las Vegas every <laughs> Christmas. and. Uh, and so it was An a great way. interesting double life you live. It was quite genius, though, <laughs> yeah. at the same time, considering being that we're all in Vegas and had all the lights and ambiance. So you don't we, notice you Christmas? You don't notice Christmas, exactly. <laughs> so by the time we came back home, um, the whole holiday was over and we didn't realize that we missed much. Mm. So. I have a personal um, dilemma in, in my head a lot. I've I've got two young boys, and um, the youngest. Don't let him kid you. He's got a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> the um, obviously, I'm saying this so that we don't talk about 
things and no one knows what the hell's happening because obviously you know my children but um uh, des and i know each other uh <laughs> but my my oldest is in kindergarten and i've always thought about the pledge of allegiance do i certainly not at his age now i'm not going to bother drilling him on if he knows what a pledge means um but uh i've thought about talking to them later um I'm 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 against a couple of, uh, against the pledge for two specific reasons, um, and I just don't know if I need to because when I was growing up, I I grew up as an atheist, but not because not I didn't know the word. I just I never believed in God. I I went to church. I went to seminary school, but I I just never believed in God. Um, but I didn't. I didn't really understand what a pledge was, and I didn't understand the ch separation of church and state issue there, and 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 so on and so forth. Um, so I didn't have a problem just saying the pledge growing up, and I don't think my kids are either. And I've never. I, but I know others that speak to their children about it. Um, you know, do you understand what this means? And if you have a problem with it, you don't have to do it. You know, go ahead and sit down. And you know, I'll talk to your principal. I'll talk to your teacher, and make sure that everything's okay. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm going to have that conversation with them. And I think you can lend a bit of insight into that. Although yours was a different situation, and I'm curious to know when you did not participate in the pledge. What was the reaction immediately from that, but also from your peers? But also, what was the reaction when you told them that you were religious? Okay. Because um, obviously that's going to, I don't know if that would be a different reaction after the explanation comes out. Um, for, I mean, of course, we were kids. So <laughs> when the peers recognized that I wasn't doing the same thing, first insight they had was, teacher, why isn't she celebrate or, you know, swinging the flag like everybody else? Right. And Pledge of Allegiance. But um, I don't. I don't think kids really thought deeply enough to ask those further questions, you know, um, when it came to right. religious views. It came, you know, here and there. Typically, right after the Pledge of Allegiance, the instructor would teach something. So I think by then, right. the thought would come out of the child's head to even ask me a question. So about. different is different. It doesn't right. matter. No. Yeah. Okay. So when you, um, you were in the Jeho with the Jehovah's Witnesses for how long? How, over how much 20 years. Like? 20 years? Over 20 years, yeah. And what was, what happened? What was the transition all about? Transition? Out of the, that environment. Well, it was quite easier for me than, say, a, another fellow Jehovah's Witness who was baptized. Because I wasn't baptized, I never had the issue of being disfellowshipped. I'm not quite sure if you... No, if, you, um, if you, two things i uh, hoping you can explain there. Mm -hmm. One is, what at what age range do most Jehovah's Witness get baptized? All ages, okay. um, except for infancy. They believe you should have some type of, of thought process before you make that type of devotion to... Despite it being uh, a thought process developed <laughs> enough to to really ponder theology? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I remember kids getting baptized as young as 9, 11 years old to seeing older people getting baptized at 80, right. 5. Um, it's just a matter of what time in your life you felt like you can make that commitment. Okay. Now, yeah, you mentioned the um, the fact that you were not baptized meant, meant that you did not have to be disfellowship. What is the process of disfellowship in the temple? Well, that's the biggest course of punishment, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, typically, for someone to be disfellowshipped means they usually commit some type of sexual act, such as adultery, fornication, mm -hmm. um, or drug. Or, of course, also being an apostate, a non-believer. Mm -hmm. So, me doing this right now, if I was baptized, yeah, I'd be disillusioned <laughs> towards right. it. But, um, but typically, if, say, you made one of those types of actions, as long as you ask for repentance, then you wouldn't be disfellowshipped. Um, I don't, in case you don't know, being disfellowshipped, what it means is basically being shunned by the yeah, by all congregation, witnesses. exactly. Right. It's their type of punishment to show that um, we're not going to listen to your viewpoints. You're still kind of in a weak, worldly point of view. 
so it's best that we don't associate with you. So only the only ones who can are the close family members of that particular person. So what was the process like for you to to start moving away from that? Whew. <laughs> I could go on on this one. Um, well, there were just a lot of details. For one, I didn't like the way that women were portrayed in the congregation. Women, I mean, they might say that women are considered equals, equal voices in the congregation, right. but they do not hold equal positions. Right. Um, only elders and ministerial servants and overseers, they are the ones who are male, all male. And, I mean, if you look at it from an outside perspective, there's definitely something wrong with that. You need a woman's point of view, at least for the women followers behind. Um, even as simple of a position such as you know, during our meetings, we'd have ushers come down the aisles with microphones. You could have boys as young as five, six years old doing that, going up and down the aisle, giving the microphone for somebody to answer at question and answer time. So long as no woman did it? So exactly. No woman, yeah. But women are more than capable of doing it. <laughs> so that was So I've one. heard. Yeah. I mean, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> So that was one huge thing for me, and along with, you know, the talks that were given were always done by a male. Right. We have, women have voices too. They should be able to speak amongst the congregation. And then what really kind of just cut the cord for me was when I discovered all these Bible verses in the Bible about women, how they're basically considered, so yeah, second class citizens, you know, um, sex slaves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and that's just, that doesn't just go for Jehovah's Witnesses, that goes for Christianity all through, anyone who believes in that book. Right. So how could I possibly believe something or keep following something that I so closely disagree with? And how did you, what did you go through in the, pro once you'd made the sort of decision to mm -hmm. cut the cord, or I'm sure it was a process, but right. it must have been a very difficult thing for you to, for you to. You know, it really wasn't as difficult as it was enlightening for me. Oh. I mean, you have to understand, 20 years of my life being brainwashed in this, in these, in the scriptures and the in the philosophy here. You know, following not just the the book of the Bible, but also all the publications they give you. To all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and being enlightened to a whole new world of of appreciating science for what it is and seeing how wrong and and contradictory the Bible is. That was enough to where I, I can no longer follow it. The hard part was probably just telling my mom about it. I know it broke her heart. Um, is she still? She is. Okay. She is, and I still have a lot of people who are close to my heart who are. And they all know what your position is? Yes, yeah. yes, they, they all know. In fact, some of them kind of stay away from me from the topic of religion at this point uh, yeah. for that particular reason, but um, yeah, for parents, it's quite disheartening to find out that one of their kids no longer wants to follow the same footsteps of them because to them that means that at laws of witness, you, when you die, it's believed that you're resurrected to live on paradise on earth, not heaven. Right, right. So that would mean that being that I'm not going to follow my mom, I wouldn't be able to be with her in, right. the, new, in the new days. So, of course, you can imagine how problematic that is for her. Yeah. We, just, we still don't talk about it too much, but she's getting better. <laughs> um, it, regarding the Bible verses, um, <laughs> regarding the entire Bible <laughs> against women, uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> when you realize what, those, what, what the Bible's position was on, on the female section of the species, was it, what was it that initially, if you remember, that went through your head, was it like, I don't like this God, or was it, this is clearly bull, or what, what was the initial thing that All went through your head? All the above. Okay. Um, th I noticed there was a pattern when it came to women. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the way everything that's glorious about being a woman was considered in a negative con you know, a negative light in the Bible. Right, right. Uh, take, for example, women be able to give birth. Yeah. In the Bible, <laughs> because of Eve's mistake, right, all of a sudden we are to have increased pains and labor due to it. Or right. 
how about the fact that uh, yeah. <laughs> women's brains, I mean, clearly they're proven to be scientifically larger than men, but what does the Bible say for women? To That they cannot teach. They're to, to be submissive to men, right. right? Right. And also, I mean, women are sexually more superior over men. But if women, I've always found that to be the case. <laughs> you know, but it's, in the Bible, it's been up to our delight to find that. Yeah. <laughs> but in the Bible, it says those type of women as whores, as mm -hmm. prostitutes. I mean, there's some serious issues with this. The only type of woman that's okay or considered virtuous is one who is like a Virgin Mary. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, and all the stories that, t like Jezebel, is considered to be negative, like. Um, Within the witnesses, one of um, the prophecies is that uh, about the end is coming, is that all false religions will come to an end, and of course the image that they use for that is a harlot. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So there's just a trend of patterns that it's just very deceitful and just makes me think that, you know, I don't know if it's religion that's trying to keep women suppressed or if it's men. You know, at this What's the difference? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I say that because, I mean, I think of Hypatia. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with Hypatia from back in like 370 AD. Mm -hmm. But um, <coughs> she was a philosopher, an astronomer, mm -hmm. and, and a mathematician. She taught younger students how to um, mm -hmm. learn more and and sinful, sinful woman. <laughs> well, I guess because of her contact with Orestes, the governor, he didn't sign some treaty right. or something. All of a sudden, it was the Christian mob who decided to murder her. And not only murder her, but mutilate her body and right. show it to the public. Right. And that's a Christian mob doing that. Right. So um, I, I just, I always think of her because. Well, where do you get your morals from? I'm just kidding. <laughs> we always have to deal with that. I knew that'd be a good time to <laughs> just do the opposite of whatever it is the Bible says. I mean, yeah. That's a pretty good start, I'd say. Oh, yeah, the, funny it's funny though. Um, that is one of kind of the the go-to things. You know, um, the Bible's treatment of women and, of course, uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what you feel as far as any moral, ethical question, mm -hmm. you can find something to back you up in the Bible. You, there's, there's both sides. You know, thou shalt not murder, unless you know. Even find, find the story of your choosing. Don't worry, you can kill your neighbor. Um, <laughs> there's there's a reason to kill anybody. Uh, but women, I don't know. I've I've heard a couple of um, Christian female pastors speak on this subject and, and they bring up certain scriptures. Oh, look at how great women are and how powerful women are in the Bible. Take this, take this. And, and you, you read it. I don't want to use this against them, but I always want to say, you're taking that out of context. Because <laughs> you, you read the story, it's like, no, this is, this is no good. And by the way, I'll just let's just say there's there's 50 fantastic stories of great women in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If it says any of the other things, if if it says if you find out that your bride is not a virgin on your wedding night, stone her to death on her father's doorstep with the rest of the townspeople. Okay. Um, I, I don't care if every great story of every great woman is in the Bible. If it has that, I'm sorry, you know. But but it is it isn't. It doesn't even have those. Um, it's one of the things that I I find the Bible. It's quite consistent. Um, Women, women are, they're not second class citizens, they're chattel, it's yeah, worse. Chattel. It's far yeah. worse. It's worse. I mean, they're sold by their fathers, so. Right. Sure. They're listed, how you treat women is often listed along with how you treat your ox and your, you know, right. all of your other belongings. So, um, you, you, you say you still have a lot of friends and, and of course your mother, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the way that you basically get around that is that it, everybody just sort of avoids the topic. Um, at first, uh, a few of her friends, you know, they try to set me down, and, and you know, they try to pinpoint me and go over everything. And of course, I went right back to them with scripture. Right. And to this day, they haven't been able to come back at me to, <laughs> yeah. to justify their thoughts. And if anything, I hoped maybe throughout our conversation that made it them think a little bit more too, but I have to say it was a bit disconcerting for me as well. I don't know if it's because the women I spoke to or 
more old school, old fashioned, but they actually agree. <clears throat> that was the most unsettling thing about the whole topic. Yeah. Is they actually agree that the men was, are supposed to be ahead of the household. I mean, theologically and speaking, the Jehovah's Witnesses are correct. Oh, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, like we were just talking Don't about. Don't get me started, Sean. I mean, there's not, there's not two sides of it in the Bible. I mean, the Bible is against women. So that. if you believe that God exists and that is the Word of God, it and, is what it is. And if it is the Word of God, this is not a God that I want to follow. No, I'll take hell. Yeah, yeah. If, if that one exactly. exists and that's actually His Word, I'll take hell. I'm with you there. <clears throat> For a number of reasons. <laughs> but, um, and I'm, I mean, in general, especially with Jehovah's Witnesses, they also don't, they condone against um, really doing your own free thinking. Mm -hmm. or coming to the table with anything different, new ideas. They're mm -hmm. supposed to follow the publications that they give you. Right. And the Watchtower. Yeah, the Watchtower. There's also <laughs> other books, too. Yeah. I mean, um, as a kid, my first book was uh, my book of Bible stories. And I will say this. Oh, I've got the, yeah. yeah, I That's will say hilarious. That. It's hilarious, but <clears throat> as a child being introduced to that type of book, the images are so powerful. I mean, I, can, I still have them in my head. You know, yeah. um, and yeah, I should specify it. it's hilarious as an adult atheist. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> but as a kid, you know, yeah. it's just it's very shocking. I remember uh, an awake coming in one time, and it had a picture of a, and I was like five, six years old, and there was a picture of a baby who uh -huh. was dying, and my mom was trying to explain to me how people murder babies at the age of five or six years old. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course I couldn't sleep that night. Right, yeah. But I have to say the imagery in their publications are extremely powerful, and it's a great way to... Uh, Let's see if I can find that one. <laughs> get, the, get the kids in it. Yeah. So you don't feel like you really planted any seeds in all the discussions you had with people because of the fact that, that they were all basically buying into the... To the idea that women were supposed to be subordinate. Yeah, I, it's, it's just sad, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, you try to bring them new ideas and let them know that it's not right. And since you don't really talk, you, that you don't talk religion with, with the people that you know, mm -hmm. so it's... Well, I have to say, one of them, we, we would, but the last time we talked about it, my mom was always present, uh, and it got to the point to where she couldn't even handle it in the room anymore. Um, so we just kind of learned to, yeah, you know, not talk about it. <laughs> so um, this all happened when you were in your early twenties, then. Uh huh. And yep. was it a long process, or did you just kind of cut the cord? To stop. To stop, yeah, um, going and participating. And, Quite, no, as soon as I discovered those scriptures in the Bible, it was done. Okay. I was, I couldn't believe any of it at that point. Was it, was it really a... That, that quick? It was, I mean... And you hadn't seen those, those verses or just not, it hadn't occurred to you what had, they were exactly. really saying? It hadn't yeah. occurred. It was something, I forget how it came across, but something about women and slaves. I'm like, no, that can't be right. That can't be in the Bible. So, yeah. of course, I had to look it up. And sure enough, I found those verses along with others, too. Right. <laughs> and right. that was enough, to where I... I couldn't follow anything. That now, it's, it's my understanding as as a witness, you're not allowed to read I mean, basically any, anything from what could be perceived as a secular source. Um, is, is that correct? I mean, you're not allowed to listen to certain certain radio, certain music sure. even, read certain books. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, they discourage anything. Um, basically, the way Jehovah's Witnesses think, they think that this world belongs to Satan the devil. Right. Okay, so anything that's different from their viewpoint is considered to be taboo by Satan or his demons. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, they, me just having the conversation with those girls at the time, they probably thought Satan was using me. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Um, we that's kind of a fallback argument that all right. religions use yep. that that when there's something that really seems compelling mm -hmm. that they don't have a better argument for they 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 fall back on that the satan argument so um, it's it's a very simple formula yeah brilliant formula to be created by the governing body but yeah. anything that's bad satan did it anything yeah. that's good Je you know jehovah did it right and um 
that's a huge issue because that means that person isn't taking any accountability for what just happened to them. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've never understood how they even get to the idea that <clears throat> Satan's the bad guy and God's the good guy. I mean, if you read book one, uh, God, the all-knowing, all-powerful, says... If you eat from that tree, surely you will die on that day, that mm -hmm. very day. And um, it, they didn't die on that day. Uh, they did eat from the tree. It was her fault, Des. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it said, just, <laughs> surely you will die, uh -huh. but... On that day. Um, that's not what I read here, but... Sure, I'll I'll take you. Over. Which version do you have? <laughs> you're not you're not reading it in context. <laughs> yeah, on, on that on that day, what I remember. What gets me about that particular story, though, is not only does God ask Adam, "Why did you eat this fruit?" but his Adam's reply is, "I gave I got it from the wife who you gave to me." Mm -hmm. So he's not taking accountability for anything. Right, <laughs> he puts it right, right back to the finger of God. Meanwhile, Eve is here saying. Uh, yeah, I was deceived by the serpent. <laughs> right. Which he also created <clears throat> with vocal tracks, which we have not found in the fossil record yet. But that talking snake, the, the devil, which it doesn't actually say that there, but it's perceived as, as Satan, um, says, no, he's wrong. You won't die. This is the tree of knowledge, and you will only get to know what he knows. You will learn things. Which is actually closer to what ha actually happens. Of course. And so, yeah, of course, they, they learn things. Mm -hmm. They learn what was right and wrong. Yeah. Well, they learned that they were naked. I don't know that yeah. that's so wrong. <laughs> I think that was a mistake. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, we thought about doing the show naked. But yeah. <laughs> nobody wants that to see that. Make it <laughs> you, YouTube said no. <laughs> and my wife. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, just, I, I always thought, well, clearly, the devil's the good guy. The, the God is, is not, is not all-knowing, all-powerful. I mean, yeah. for he, first of all, he was wrong. They didn't die. They didn't die on that day. This is, this is nonsense. Oh, they died a spiritual death. Okay, well, now we're just playing games. Anyways, here's a, a good picture of, uh, I don't know if the camera can get this, but some children dying right before the first mm -hmm. rainbow. Beautiful story. Um, yeah. um, and I this remember is, the images more than I remember the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is great. This is a happy story. Oh, this is the, the first rainbow, you know. They, they get there, burn one of the animals, of mm. course, you know. God loves a sacrifice. That was even another issue that I had just with the God viewpoint in general. Just how Adam and Eve were introduced to this new earth. And they were allowed to take plenty of, of everything of the earth except for that tree. Yeah. Right? So... Which like, he put... There, exactly. in the middle. Right. Right. <laughs> but it just kind of also makes mankind think that they can take advantage of Earth in general, that everything belongs to them, that, and yeah. forget the animals as equals or anything else. And I have an issue with that, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, here's another uh, oh, yeah. kid dying. This is a, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. This is a righteous man here. The kid was probably an atheist or something. Or his, or his mom did something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. That uh, kids don't actually remember the stories; they remember the the, the pictures, sure. and that's very powerful. <laughs> it, I mean, a lot of those images. I'm just like my head still goes back to them easily. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, it's an issue because my niece, uh, she was kind of introduced to that book. I'm very mm. cautious about her <laughs> studying these things. Right. Not alone because it's a question, Do we, should children really be knowing these types of stories yet? Are they mature enough to handle them? I don't think so. No. I, I remember for me, um, you know, I wasn't... <clears throat> my parents just never spoke of religion. They, um, now that, that I don't shut up about it, you know, my mom is an atheist and my, mm -hmm. my dad is still a complete apatheist he's yeah whatever shut up um, <laughs> I don't care uh, we we all treat you that way yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with religion right. <laughs> um, but they never it was never talked about when I was a kid I was baptized actually um, 
Catholic. This is just mainly for the party and for <laughs> for grandma. All the kids had to get baptized. Um, though I did get, I have my certification back there. I was de debaptized. I had salt thrown at me to remove any of the liquids. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real certificate. Yeah, it's a real certificate. It's, it's legitimate. I'm going to show it to God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Signed by Sam Singleton. Yes. Atheist evangelist. <laughs> we love you, Sam. Brother Sam. So Sean's the Antichrist. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I remember going to the, the, the nearest preschool was a Lutheran preschool. And so we, that's the preschool we went to. And I remember coloring stories of you know Noah's Ark and stuff, and I, I've often thought back on that because I'd like to think that I was smart enough to figure it out. Then I don't, I don't think I was. I figured something else out though. Um, I remember coloring stories of Noah's Ark one day, and the, the sisters there were telling us the story, and and I don't know whether it was <laughs> there's a thousand questions you could ask about that story, but I asked one of the questions, and you know surely you know, you're not serious about this, are you? You know, something along those lines. And, and I remember they didn't have any answers to my questions. They just got mad that I would ask. They said, if you don't believe this, you're going to burn in hell. And I thought, well, I don't think you should tell children. <laughs> and, and it was the only thing I learned. I learned nothing about theology or God or, or religious being, religions being bogus at that point. It was just, oh, wow. Adults can be morons, because I, I thought that they all knew things by that point, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the thing I remember. And it reminded me of when you said that, because I don't know that kids under can understand any of this in any which way that people think you should. Right. Um, but when it's drilled into you at at such a young age, it's very difficult for people to get out of it. Um, I mean, you know, Jim and I do a lot of of events with the local secular communities and and we we run into people all the time that um, hell was a big deal but, you know, they didn't believe in God they they realized whatever holy book it was was bogus but <clears throat> hell tortured them for forever they didn't believe in God they didn't they didn't believe in heaven and hell but they the thought of it, the, the it just it tortured them for such a long time. And there's there's people that are still that I've heard recently that still having a hard you know they they go to atheist events yeah. but they still are afraid of of hell and it's difficult to get it's being deprogrammed. Yeah, it's well, difficult to get stuff like that out of your mind. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that that is least understood or appreciated about about the indoctrination of religion is the is the fear and terror that children go through mm -hmm. as a result of not just the idea of hell, but all of these various different stories that they're told. Sure. Like like your visions from, uh, it's, it's uh, it hasn't, I don't think it's been well understood, but it's far more widespread than, than people think that it is. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly damaging to people all the way, as Sean says, through adulthood. I will say though, um, <laughs> through the beliefs of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, hell was never, they don't believe it's a fiery oh, hell. That's right. Um, right. So it's not something where I ever felt like I was afraid if I didn't believe that I'd be going to right. a burning place. Um, they consider hell to be a graveyard. So when someone dies, they just become unconscious until mm -hmm. it's time to be resurrected again well, and live on paradise on something Earth. that we so, agree with the Jehovah right. <laughs> yeah. so maybe awesome. it's a little easy it was a little easier for me in that transition yeah. but um, you still went through all of the all of the stories that you were told sure. that that bothered you so yeah. it's not just the idea it, of you know really that never I didn't care about the afterlife I yeah. even the everlasting life I wasn't trying to buy into it if anything I was more afraid of losing relationships of course. Personal relationships. I mean, I, like I said, I still have people who are dear to my heart that are witnesses. Um, one girl who I grew up with, um, she's about to have a baby, and I don't feel like I can be at her baby shower because I don't share the same views as her. I now be considered a worldly thinker, you know, yeah. someone not to associate with. So that's hard. Um, I was I, say my best friend growing up, and, and still a... Uh, deeply close friend of mine um, uh, is a Mormon, still is a Mormon, <clears throat> and when he got married, I was the best man. I was not allowed in the ceremony. 
um, I had to That's wait right. outside I mean, of the temple. You can't be. Oh, I kept saying temple. It's Kingdom Hall. Kingdom Hall. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. I kept saying like temple. I'm used to. I'm used to the Mormons. Yeah, um, the Mormons can go in that. Yeah, I. Oh, it was funny though because <clears throat> it was the San Diego Temple, and when they had first opened that, they let everyone in. Of course, we had to wear you know uh, hospital booties, but. Um, I, so I've already been in there, right? <laughs> but I was, and I was the best man at the wedding. You're not allowed. All right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, clearly, these are things where you want to witness and be a part of your, you know, your dear friend's life, and you don't get to because right. you share a different viewpoint. And it's never your decision. Right. It's it's always the decision of the the believer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. you have anything else you'd like to? <laughs> Sorry, one question on that. Um, are there Obviously, there's specific relationships that you miss mm -hmm. um, with individuals that that you met and, and and grew up with, and so on and so forth uh, in the Kingdom Hall. Do you miss though the tradition, the the every Sunday going, um, any of any part of that? Um, I miss. I will have to say, when it comes to witnesses, they are great. They're a great support system. Mm -hmm. When some one of their brothers or sisters is going through some trouble time in their life, they are there to support them. I mean, just like my mom. Um, so, in that aspect, people need people. You yeah, know, right, to help right. them through hard times. I will say they're really good at that. Yeah. Um, I've met a lot of genuinely good people um, that are witnesses, and. Um, it, yeah, it's it's really hard <laughs> not to be able to still have that close relationship with them. So, right. You have yeah. joined uh, one or two atheist organizations, yes. Yes. But you haven't been going every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just not locally, you know. Yeah. Close. So, um, yeah. But I will say too, um, being that I, even though I don't follow the witnesses, and now that I'm call myself an atheist mm -hmm. I feel like I've definitely become a better person for it I've grown a lot since then since calling yourself an atheist sure. I mean since leaving okay yeah. can you expand on that a little um sure because it doesn't just let me settle for your basic simple answer of something you know um for example saying oh look at those clouds outside <laughs> you know your typical witness answer would be like oh god made everything so beautiful Right? Versus if you thought from an atheist point of view, you'd say, oh, okay, well, that was made by water vapor <laughs> and temperature. Right. You know what I mean? You look a little bit more deeper into things, and it just gave me a much more uh, appreciation for science. And, you know, versus being a witness, I always had questions. And, you know, in my personal Bible studies, I'd always ask questions every single time, and sometimes I, I feel bad for the girl who was dying with me because she didn't always have the right answers, but. I just listened to her and nod my head just to be nice, you mm -hmm. know, but I never got that satisfaction of getting the real answer. Versus this, there's no rhyme or reason. It is what it is. Science is science, you know? And, um, and I think it's just pushed me to do more due diligence and more research and make me uh, live a, a more, more account and have more accountability in my life. For example, we just went to a restaurant last week and I I saw something I really didn't like, you know, the Des before years ago that was a witness would have looked at that and said, oh, well, that person who's doing wrong is going to get it later, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll just stay out of it. Versus this person now actually stepped in because I didn't like what I saw. Right. It, make me, it makes you take more accountability for what's going on today and appreciate the life you're living in now versus later. At least that's the way I feel about it. You mentioned you mentioned that I think earlier that it was a liberating experience. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It just makes me look at so many world issues and realize that we do have the power to change things. I think that if more people were less followers of religion and looked more into issues that we can take at hand, we'd probably solve a lot more of our own problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pardon me for asking a, an obvious question, but. Do you find any less beauty in the clouds now that you know it's, <laughs> it, it's not a drawing from God? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No. Um, uh, it, if anything, it kind of makes you look at the quirkiness, too, of life. You know, the little mistakes that happen right. versus that you might not see before. Yeah. But, no, if anything, it's, it's been a good change in 
I'm, I'm glad I'm happy with where I'm going you know yeah. I don't have any any worries when I go to sleep at night right. <laughs> you know and if anything it just makes me appreciate my family now today right and and I'm happy good that's all I can say <laughs> I'm happy now great you know <laughs> Well, I'm happy I know you. I'm happy we're friends. <laughs> exactly, I'm happy too. You're an well, incredibly yeah. intelligent and fun person. So thanks so we're, much. We're, Likewise, good we're company. Glad to have you here. Um, though, you know, as you know, we do a lot in the atheist community, mm -hmm. and I I feel at this point I should let you know we do have some new um, guidelines uh, for women. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he only said that because he I'm sitting between me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have said it. I would have to bear the brunt <laughs> of the kick in the shit. As show. long as we get to be the ones in charge, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, how, that's how it generally works out. That's how it generally works out. It's only about out. the clothes thing. <laughs> yes, thanks so much thank for coming guys. on. It was it was thank you so much. It's a pleasure. I love you guys. <laughs> thank you thank for you. joining us on the Magoo Show. Yeah.